Hello. Thank you for joining us for the implications for instruction connecting the Idaho Contest Standards and Math and Smarter Balanced Assessment webinar on Saturday. This post webinar recording is to be used after participating in either the live or recorded session and will cover how to navigate the Smarter Balanced website in order to retrieve Smarter Balanced sample items aligned to the Idaho Math Core Standards and the Mathematical Practices, as well as the Smarter Balanced Assessment Claims and Targets for Mathematics. My name is Nancy Thomas Price. I'm joined by Nicole Hall today. We are going to be um, going through a navigation of the website and a couple of other websites that people can use to support their work. And we are going to give you screenshots because we think that will be easier. But please feel free to follow along on a live site if you have that available. Item and performance task specifications provide guidance on how to translate the Smarter Balanced content specifications into actual assessment items. On the assessment web page on the Smarter Balanced website, click on the hyperlink and go to the web page to walk through the following. SmarterBalanced.org is the website link. And if you're going to follow, follow along live, you're going to want to, instead of using the drop-down menu here, you're going to click on this black bar where it says Smarter Balance Assessment. There are other things on this website that will be great for you to check out. Um, we're going to go back to the page that says Smarter Balanced Assessments, but um, you can take a look at the practice and the pilot test. There are 30 items in each grade level in each content area, both math and ELA. Um, you can look at the item writing and review information, um, the achievement level descriptors and the college and content readiness documents go into what achievements should look like at each of different levels, similar to our basic and below basic, but um, not quite the same. So that's a good um, document to take a look at. There's also information about the computer adapted testing and exactly how that works, um, the technology that will be used, and the test administration. So if you go back to um, having clicked on the page that said Smarter Balanced Assessments, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page, and you'll go past the section that talks about the test blueprints. Um, that's another document that's interesting to look at because it lays out for you the times of the different sections of the test and what the item types will look like um, on those assessments and how many of any given type of item. If you look under the mathematics subheading towards the bottom, you will find math, content-specific, general item specifications, and grade level item specifications. If you click on a grade level, you will be able to access a folder of item specifications and item types. You can, if you're doing this live with us, go ahead and um, open the like grades three through five file. Um, we're going to look at a few claims and assessment targets and um, the way that they are set up into these in these folders. Once you've opened the zip folder and have clicked on it, once again you will see additional folders, and those are organized by claim. We talked in the webinars about claims 1, 2, 3, and 4 in mathematics and what those represent. Here there's one folder for each claim. And again, remember that claims are the broad statements of the assessment system's learning outcomes. Each claim then requires evidence that articulates the type of data and observations 
that will support us interpreting whether or not the student is competent and is moving towards achievement of those claims. Again, the evidence is spelled out in the assessment target. When you go into each claim folder, you will see specific assessment targets. Let's go into claim one, math, grades six through eight, and go ahead and open up target H. That would be right here. Let's take a look at one of the assessment item specifications documents and, and go into assessment target. Now we're going to go into assessment target grade D for grade six. Sorry about that. If we look at grade six, assessment target D, the general item specification goes into the assessment target from the content specifications more deeply. In the first portion of the document, you'll see a repeat of the assessment target evidence descriptor from the content specifications. That's right here. Remember the item specifications were created using the content specs. The specifications are used as guidelines for item writers and designers of the Smarter Balanced Assessment System, but they're also very valuable for districts that are writing their own items, whether for interim assessments or from benchmark assessments. As you keep scro scrolling down the item specifications, you'll see the required prompt features and stimuli for evidence. These are used when creating items aligned to the assessment target. Also included in the item specifications are the allowable stimulus materials, the vocabulary, and the tools. In addition, the depth of knowledge, which we covered in the live webinar, is indicated. If you look at the current slide, you will see selected response and constructed response, CR, uh, SR, and CR. Once again, there are several different item types that will be included in the Smarter Balanced Assessment. You should include these item types in your classroom work and be asking for students to elicit the same kinds of evidence that are described in the assessment targets. Make sure that students are familiar with selected response and go past a simple A, B, C, D, multiple choice, modeling some of your tasks after the types of selected response that are used on the assessment that you've been shown. The slide lists each item type, and remember those acronyms um, are there so that you'll be able to identify them when looking at items in the folders. When we look at sample item types shortly, we'll be looking at all of the item types mentioned here. When using various types of items and tasks to connect content and practice, there are multiple dimensions to mathematical proficiency, ranging from knowing important mathematical facts and procedures to being able to use that knowledge in the solution of complex problems. Smarter Balance intends to use a variety of item assessment item types and tasks to assess student mathematical proficiency. The type of assessment item or task that is called upon will be aligned to the type of learning that is being assessed. For example, the knowledge of mathematics content and procedures, things like how to add fractions or how to solve two linear equations in two unknowns, can usually be assessed with single point correct or incorrect items. 
So items might be selected response, multiple choice, completion, short answer, technology enhanced like drag and drop or matching. On the other hand, demonstrating the skill to model a mathematical situation or to explain the rationale for a given approach when solving a problem requires using assessment tasks that are scored using more nuanced scoring guides or rubrics, usually on a multiple point scale, 0 to 2 points, 0 to 3 points, for example. These extended and performance tasks may be, in some cases, enhanced with technology. Sometimes this distinction between items, tasks, and performance events is confused and how easy or difficult the problem is for the student. Care should be taken not to confuse the overall difficulty with the assessment type. Some single point multiple choice items can be quite difficult, and some complex performance events can contain fairly simple and straightforward items and tasks. So the more complex tasks and performance events are not used as a means to develop more challenging problems. Rather, they are used because they are more a direct means of assessing the application of skills such as problem solving or reasoning. So what about claims 2, 3, and 4? Let's take a look and go back to the folders for each claim. We're going to go into claim 2 this time. Instead of breaking down the claim into assessment targets, as in claim one, the item specifications encompass all assessment targets under claims two, three, and four. As in claim one, the general grade level item specifications are the first three files, and the remaining are sample item types. What is great about these sample items is that you have all the specific information about the domain they're from, the associated assessment targets, depth of knowledge, mathematical practices, et cetera. So the item specifications are provided for each individual item. Let's take a look at grade six item specifications for claim two. You'll see a descriptive summary of the primary claim and a secondary claim if there is one and primary and secondary domains and assessment targets. As you scroll down, you will see mathematical practices aligned to each claim with task models. This engagement with the content in these items can only enhance classroom instruction. There are very detailed descriptions of the kinds of evidence that students will need to show and the depth of knowledge, um, their alignment to the content, the, the actual content standard, and teachers can learn a great deal from reviewing these resources. OK, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole now. And we are going to look at some other websites that provide resources for teachers to use, um, both in terms of lessons and assessment. OK, one resource is Illustrated Mathematics. And this website is organized by grade level and Common Core State Standard cluster headings. And so it will allow educators to more easily access activities aligned to specific cluster headings and standards. Um, the next website is NCTM's Illuminations. And this website is also organized by grade level and standards. And there is a lot of material on here. This is the website for the National um, Council for Teachers of Mathematics. This website is 
for EDUCORE. It has a lot of lesson plans and assessments on it and, and different types of unit plans with rubrics. I really appreciate the way that this website is laid out. It tells teachers what to do prior to the lesson, during the lesson, and after the lesson, and includes great formative assessment tasks for every lesson provided. The mathematics assessment project is not only organized by grade level and standard, but also by mathematical practice. So you can find wonderful mathematical units at this site for the middle grade and high school levels. Again, there are excellent lessons um, and tasks aligned with those lessons, as well as formative assessment um, tasks. There are some great professional development modules included in this site. One has to do with formative assessment. Um, there's a great deal here that can be very useful as you're beginning to build your curriculum and roll out instruction in all of these um, and with all of the new standards. Inside Mathematics is another great resource um, that has lessons and activities arranged by grade and standard, but they also have a lot of great videos on this website as well. For your LEP students, a great mathematical practice resource can be found at CCSSO's website. And it's the Framework for English Language Proficiency Development Standards. It will help you incorporate mathematical practices into instruction for your English language learners. It's also a good resource for all students if you find that you have some struggling students. You can also find additional resources at the New York Office of Assessment website. New York was one of those states that had a race to the top grant, and so they put um, quite a bit of money into developing um, sample common core questions, um, activities, uh, many, many resources that are used throughout the state of New York. Um, well, your next steps would be to become more familiar with the content and all of the documents discussed in the webinar and the pre and post recording. And be sure to visit the websites we've provided and start looking at the sample lesson plans and formative assessment activities. Also, begin using the documents and the identified implications for instruction when adjusting current activities, lessons, or units to meet the rigor of the Idaho course state standards and make sure you have balance. Also, be sure to go on to the Smarter Balance website and start looking at all the different items that are available to you. Here's our contact information. Um, you can um, get a hold of either Nicole, Nicole or myself. Um, we've provided our phone numbers and our emails if you need any additional information as you follow up with the activities that will be made available to you um, for having, after having completed these sessions. Thank you.